So where does all of this stand? Let's go to Jerry Willis. We also have cardiologist Dr. Kevin Campbell. So, Doctor, to you first on this notion of pre-existing conditions and coverage. Some people have a real problem leaving that up to states that they're, even in this party, very big on states' rights and all of that. This is one thing that the federal government should backstop. Do you agree with that? You know, I have real concerns about leaving this to the states. There's very little about the Affordable Care Act I like, but I do like the pre-existing coverage. And I am worried that if you leave this to the states, patients are going to be priced out, they're going to have no care, and ultimately it's going to be even more expensive because they're going to get no care and show up in extreme distress. You know, Jerry, uh, fortunately, you, you, you've made this a very big cause in, in, in terms of what you've been personally going through battling cancer. Uh, there is the possibility under such a plan that depending on the state you live, you could get coverage, you might not get coverage. So it always comes back to that. Or is it that black and white? What do you think? Well, uh, Neil, listen, this is obviously a cause very important to me, and I know to you as well. We've both had our health care battles, and we want to see people get coverage. As I understand it, what's going on right now, yes, states can opt out, but they can only opt out if they come up with a plan that is better and works. So this idea of high-risk pools, there is, though, a very big problem with those. And let me tell you specifically what it is. The Republicans say they're putting more money towards this idea. And you're really talking about covering two to three million Americans who have very big, high-priced medical bills. In one state alone, in Iowa, one patient costs that state a million dollars a month. So how do you solve for that? How much money would it take? $200 billion, conservative estimate over 10 years. This bill, as it's being proposed, right now does not propose $200 billion. It's something much less than that, even with the $8 billion extra that Fred Upton suggested a day, Neil. You know, uh, Doctor, you're a cardiologist, and I, I, I know very well that that's a challenging profession, and you're the smartest of the smart, which is just in that, that study. So let me ask you about the expense, because that is when you've got cardio-related issues, uh, they, they could be pricey. And especially if you have a past and history of them, then getting follow-up coverage is going to cost you more. Do you think high-risk pools, however they're paid for, are the answer? Because th those pools themselves uh, could be very pricey. And we would be replacing one big omnibus program with another big omnibus program. You know, I think you said it right there. I think we're trading one bad choice for another because you're right. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in the U.S. today. It's very expensive to treat this. However, if we actually focus on prevention, preventing heart disease by working on preventing diabetes and high blood pressure and things of that sort, we can lower these costs. And, you know, these patients are not going to be that expensive. From personal experience, my daughter has type 1 diabetes, hmm. and she's had it since she was five years old. And without insurance, it's almost unaffordable to keep her healthy and well. She's 16 now, but luckily I have insurance. You know, the, my problem with the whole preventive thing, doctor, is I, I discovered in the process that there's this thing called the food pyramid, and I didn't have to be reminded <laughs> of, about that, but, but I, I, I hear where you're coming from. But, Jerry, you know, that will be the, 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 the issue here, whether Republicans, for all of this back and forth, have still stuck to the basic principles, the things that we like about Obamacare, coverage for pre-existing conditions, maybe keeping your kid on policy a little bit longer. Um, you can never get turned down, all of that stuff, but that the cost will still, to the doctor's point, be substantial. Then why make the move at all? Well, the cost will be substantial. There's no doubt about it. And let's be very clear, crystal clear about what we're talking about here with the risk pools. The costs go to the government. The people paying for their insurance coverage wouldn't notice any difference. Those costs would be borne by the government. That's what they're talking about right now. This is what could happen. We're just not sure. We're talking about a very different paradigm than existed before Obamacare. And to the good doctor's point, he, Kevin's a very good friend of mine, prevention is everything. Prevention is great. But sometimes there are some diseases you can't prevent. You yeah. hear about for the first time in the doctor's office, and you have to deal with it right there and right then. Yeah, there's no one healthier than you before you were diagnosed. So uh, me, I had it coming. I, I left it at that. But guys, <laughs> thank you. Thank you both very, very much. Interesting read. So that, that's a separate issue, trying to get this health care thing done uh, one way or the other and cover pre-existing conditions. And then to win those law.